Hey guys, I'm Andrew Jones and this is Artcast number 47. This piece today is a digital painting of Michael Shannon from the movie The Shape of Water. This is now one of my favorite movies. I got to see it in a theater. I just bought the Blu-ray disc um, and I just I just love it. I, even if you aren't a fan of Guillermo del Toro, which I am, but even if you aren't, um, I think there's there's a lot to love about this movie. Um, I'm painting this from uh, one of my favorite stills from the movie of Michael Shannon um, looking very mean. He's kind of the bad guy, spoiler. But um, I just love these, the shadows and the gray tones and um, he has a in very interesting, intense face and I wanted to see if I couldn't do a caricature of it um, and do a painting that was kind of uh, faithful to the, the photo reference here. So right now I'm just kind of blocking in, um, trying to get the caricature going uh, with just a very simple pencil brush. I think this is just a very basic HB uh, pencil. Um, I, I had used previously the, um, the brush packs from Kyle Webster um, and they are now standard inside of Photoshop if you, if you are paying for the Adobe Suite. Um, you get all of these brushes uh, for free now and this is just one of them. And in this whole piece, I've only used this brush uh, to do the penciling and a combination of a, a soft round brush and a hard round brush, and, and that's pretty much it. I really haven't ventured too far into you know, a lot of other custom brushes. I tend to just kind of stick with the round ones and, and I'm doing okay with them, I think. Um, this piece took a really really long time to do um, I think it was about four hours over the course of a few days um, I actually did record the entire process which I don't always do on these pieces just because they they just take so long and it's so much video but I wanted to actually capture this process You'll see I'm just kind of I'll do some penciling on a layer and then kind of screen that layer back and then do penciling again over it just kind of trying to refine the shapes and and getting the, the caricature a little better to not capture these digital paintings because they were so long but also because my computer did not have enough hard drive space to really do um, anything of this length but I recently just got another external USB hard drive which its only purpose in life is to capture and, and edit videos on so I, I felt a little safer this time that I could just capture a huge amount of video and have some place to put it. The only the only fear is that you know that hard drive might fail before I get a chance to do a final render, but I guess that's that's always a chance I'm going to have to take. And here I'm just adjusting the mouth, trying to f to get um, the caricature a little tighter. Um, when I do caricatures, I'm I'm always afraid to push it too far. I'll get to a point where I think that's that's probably good enough. I should go further. I should push this or that. And then I don't because I'm afraid to screw it up. Um, in this case, I, I did go a little further than I was going to at first. And I think it, I think it did the, uh, I think it did the piece a lot better. 
here I'm just putting in a flat flat tone and then create a layer on top of that which is a clipping mask which means that you can paint anywhere in the boundaries of that original layer but you can get kind of messy and it won't go outside of that boundary you could use a mask or something like that but i feel like it's it's easier just to make clipping uh, layers right above that and you can do as many as you want i try to sample colors from the original source photo but a lot of times the colors just don't sample right. What you see in the reference, um, it's hard to get a really good sample that um, is, is a good uh, combination of what you need. So a lot of times you just kind of have to grab the, the color and then um, adjust it a little bit here and there to make it darker, lighter, you know, add a little warmth, something like that. You just can't it's a it's a good starting point to use the color picker to grab the color but you're you're likely gonna have to adjust it so here I'm I'm just going in with um, just basic shapes basic round brush um, at this point you want to use a bigger brush to kind of block in things and then um, over multiple passes you get the brush a little smaller a little more opaque and you get you know more details but at this point you're just looking to kind of rough things in i used to typically be kind of afraid of this stage just because you're still working with your sketch layer and it's it's hard sometimes to to let my brain think that it's okay to see these big giant stroke lines because you are working um, <clears throat> with such big shapes and a big brush but really you know it, it's okay because I mean those are gonna get blended out um, in later steps anyway so in this painting I've, I've really I think I've done a better job at um, letting myself do that and you know block things in the way they needed to be and then go back and and refine them in multiple passes and the trick with this and one of my other problems with digital painting is kind of the same with caricature is I I tend to not go far enough I don't push shadows enough I don't push highlights enough and it often tends to make things look a little too flat so in this particular piece for this photo reference there are some deep deep dark shadows and some really light highlights and I wanted to make sure that I that I got those and at this stage what you're seeing now everything does still kind of look kind of flat because I'm not really getting um, those deep deep shadows yet but those those will come along over time and at this point I'm also working towards being able to turn that sketch layer off so you'll see me I'm turning it off I turn it back on turn it off back on just so that I can make sure that my shapes are following those lines and eventually um, what I'm working on is just the painting without the sketch layer. Because with the sketch layer off at this point, everything looks kind of pretty undefined. But as, as I go along in multiple passes, it'll start tightening up.
So a little earlier on in the process, I was I was starting to worry that this might not work. Um, I didn't know if the caricature was right. I didn't know if the, the paints that I was laying in were going to be right. But we're now almost about halfway through the process. And I think it, it was at this point where I started thinking this this might be OK. This might work. trying to add a little more warmth um, just a little more uh, reddish pinkish hues I am still terrible at eyes so I definitely am trying to get this get the eyes uh, looking a little better So right now, if you look in my layer palette, um, everything has been done on this one clipping layer so far. I'll end up making a lot more, um, but yeah, you can do an awful lot uh, in that just one layer. Here I've, I've come back to this a day later and I was not happy with the shape of that eye. So I tilted it a little bit, resized it a little bit, and then went back in and kind of feathered around those edges. And I was a lot more happy with that. Sometimes it just takes coming back to it the next day and realizing what was it that didn't work. So here I'm going in with a super dark green to get in these shadows. Um, this is on another clipping layer set to uh, multiply. Um, I'm setting the opacity down a little bit. In this way, so rather than trying to paint in a lot of the darker shadows and stuff, I just go in with a huge brush um, with a really dark color, start painting that in. Um, I actually changed this to a, a, a color uh, layer instead of multiply and then laid in uh, a little more greens um, and I think just that one step really uh, really took this thing to another level um, unfortunately I had, I had done most of his jacket without the recording going so sorry about that um, at one point I was painting away and looked up to realize it was not recording. And even these, this place with this shirt, um, in these early stages of just painting this, I was just like, this is not working, this is not working, but multiple passes, multiple refinements, and it ends up being fine. And that's that's one of the the mental blocks I have to get around in digital painting is like it doesn't uh, it doesn't just appear well it does kind of just appear but it doesn't instantly look right um, it's just a matter of multiple passes refinement rinse and repeat because at this point those shadows are not nearly dark enough it doesn't push things. Um, back there's not enough highlights to bring things forward um, but it'll get there this guy's hair and I changed the hair line a little bit um, I don't think I actually recorded that that process either but it wasn't quite lining up with the reference photo so again this is just about sampling a few colors from the reference 
going in with a fairly decent sized brush. Um, for these, I'm using a round brush where uh, the pressure sensitivity is set to adjust the transparency instead of the size. So um, it can do these nice little feathery places uh, with color. And that's all I'm doing right now is just kind of using that to kind of fill in shadows and highlights. And then once I get a little further, then I'll go into a more opaque, smaller brush to do the smaller um, strands of hair. The real trick is knowing when to stop. Be really tricky but in this particular piece um, I really felt like it was it was going really well and, and I'm pretty happy with with how that turned out Here I'm just adding a little bit of that green tint now onto the background at one point I was just going to cut out the background from the photo and just try to blur it and just kind of be done with it. But I thought, no, I'm doing this. I'm, I'm in it. I might as well just actually draw a background. So I took the, the photo reference, blew it up in the background, traced in the basic shapes, and then I just throw that uh, photo layer away. So now I've got my, my basic tracing of the shapes and I'm just going in basically just with the marquee tool, selecting colors, blocking in very basic shapes. Um, and I'm doing this on a few layers to keep a few elements separate from each other. But this is all it is. I'm just blocking. I know this, this whole thing is going to get blurred out. So I'm not super worried about it being totally precise. And as long as it has roughly the color scheme I want it to have, it should be fine. I had to kind of extend the ceiling up a little further than what I had in the reference. But luckily it's, it's pretty simple shapes. And these circular shapes in the background, I have no idea what those actually were um, in real life on the set, but they were kind of tricky to do. Um, but I ended up just making little concentric circles uh, with the selection tool and kind of painting uh, very lightly inside of that just to show uh, those, those rings and those shadows. I, I think it worked okay. There was no way I was going to try to freehand all these, these circular shapes. And then we just duplicate it.
kind of blurring out these lights a little bit. Now here I'm using a, I think this is just a chalk brush. Um, so I wanted to try to get a little more rough surface in the background. And again, this is all going to be blurred anyway, uh, but I didn't want these to be uh, completely rounded shapes. So this is the only place where I'm using anything that's not just a round brush. But I like this brush and I, I feel like I might do something like a landscape or something that's that's just uses a really rough brush like this. lights here and this is just a um, just a selection with a with a little slight feather on it and then going back into my round brush and just kind of feathering it out from the the light source And again, this is all just about multiple passes. I go over a lot of these elements um, several times uh, in some cases. And even though this background is going to be blurred, there's, there's certain things that um, just needed a little bit more work. Because I still needed him to be really the focus and, and really kind of popping out of the the background. Here I'm just kind of adjusting hues just to get the greens a little bit more of what I wanted. Now I'm just adding with a really big brush some, some shadows all the way around. back to some final refinements on the face just to make some some places where it needed to be a little sharper um, a little more solid shapes going in and taking care of that now here are a real big part of the caricature so I definitely needed to come back and just kind of finesse those a little bit more
try and push and pull lights and darks a little bit more for a little more refinement. Still working on that eye. And again, I, I could have spent hours and hours more just tweaking and refining, but at a certain point you have to you have to call it done. Now I'm doing something a little bit different with this this piece. I actually recorded the whole entire process, which was about three hours and 45 minutes of footage. I have put that all together in one long video, um, and I think I'm going to put that up on Gumroad so you can buy a package that's either the final JPEG and layered Photoshop file, or those two files and the full unedited uh, real-time video. So there'll be links in the description on where to find that on Gumroad. Um, and if that works out and people like it, I'll probably sell some more. Um, thanks for watching this piece, and I'll see you next time.